Hello and welcome to Crime Time UK. In the UK, 180,000 people are reported missing every year, which equates to about one every 90 seconds. Thankfully, most are found safe and well, but there are a select few that are never seen again. Today, we're going to look at four of those cases. Our first missing person is Corey McKeague, who went missing in 2016 in Bury, St Edmunds. McKeague was born in September 1993 in Fife in Scotland, and when he was nine years old, he moved with his two brothers and his mother to Dunfermline. In 2013, McKeague joined the RAF, where he was a senior aircraftman, gunner and medic. At the time of McKeague's disappearance, he was in a long-term relationship with his girlfriend, and neither of them knew that she was pregnant at the time. What you'll see now is the last known CCTV footage of McKeague before he disappeared. McKeague entered this cul-de-sac where there was only one way in and out and it was covered by CCTV. It's believed that McKeague climbed into one of these industrial bins in the cul-de-sac and 45 minutes later a bin lorry came to empty it. In the months that followed the disappearance of McKeague, Suffolk Constabulary spent £2.1 million investigating his disappearance making it one of the most expensive missing person investigations the force had ever conducted. After months of searching, there was never anything found on McKeague or his mobile phone. On the night of his disappearance, he had briefly slept in a doorway before heading into the cul-de-sac where his car was parked nearby, which was a mystery. In March 2022, there was an inquest and it concluded that he had died after climbing into a commercial waste bin as a result of compression asphyxia in association with multiple injuries. But like I said, Neither him nor his mobile have ever been found. This next case has baffled me for nearly nine years as well as thousands of other people. This case about Alan Bryant Jr. who was last seen on November the 3rd, 2013. At the time of his disappearance, Alan was 23 years old and was last seen at 2.02am leaving Six Nightclub to make his way home. Earlier that evening, Alan had been with his friends at a party in the nearby Leslie Golf Club, which is just a short walk from Alan's home. After the party at the golf club, Alan briefly made his way home before heading to Six Nightclub. What you will see next is the last known CCTV footage of Alan seen alive at 2.02 in the morning. When Alan left Sticks Nightclub, he headed in the direction of his home, which was only a 10 minute walk, but unfortunately he never made it home. Now although the police managed to get CCTV from Sticks Nightclub, there are other businesses including a gym nearby which do have CCTV, but unfortunately by the time the police got there, the footage 
was already deleted. Alan's parents, Alan Sr. and Marie, have never given up hope in finding answers as to what happened to Alan. But nearly nine years on, unfortunately nothing's been found and there just is no answers as to what exactly happened. There is a £20,000 reward for any information to find out exactly what happened to Alan. This is Andrew Gosden, who was 14 years old when he went missing in 2007. Andrew was a straight-A student and never missed a day of school, which makes his case extremely strange. Andrew was from Doncaster in South Yorkshire, and on the morning of his disappearance, everything was normal. He got ready for school, he left at five past eight and crossed a field to catch a bus which would have took him to school. But instead of going to the bus stop, Andrew decided to go to the petrol station where there was a cash point and he withdrew £200 from the £214 he had in his account. Andrew then made his way back home where he changed out of his uniform, put some casual clothes on. Now this is very unusual because Andrew had never missed a day of school. Andrew then went to the train station where he bought a one-way ticket to London. Now he was offered a return for an extra 50 pence but strangely, he refused. The ticket person would later tell police that she even offered it to him again, just in case he did decide to return. But for the second time, Andrew refused. At 9.35am, he was witnessed boarding a train to King's Cross. A woman who sat next to him said he was very quiet and just playing on his computer console. When the train pulled into King's Cross at 11.20am, this is the last known CCTV footage of Andrew. Over the years, there's been 122 sightings of Andrew, but unfortunately, none of them have been confirmed. There are many theories why Andrew disappeared on that day, and also why he bought a one-way ticket to London. Andrew is very familiar with London. He travelled there quite often with his family and he did have a lot of family who lived there. So he knew London well and he knew London's transport system so he would have never got lost. And one theory is he may have got snatched off the street. Another theory is he went to go and watch a rock band which he was a fan of but again it doesn't explain why he only bought a one-way ticket. Another theory is he was gay and his family was very religious so he travelled to London where it was more accepted. A year after his disappearance, a man visited a police station in Hereford in the West Midlands. At the time, the police station was unmanned and only had an intercom where it could speak to the police. Unfortunately, when a police car got there, the man had disappeared and has never been traced. Apparently, he had information on where Andrew was. On the 8th of December, 2021, two men aged 38 and 45 were arrested on suspicion of kidnap and human trafficking in London. Both have since been released and are under investigation. It's been 15 years and Andrew's still missing and no one really knows what happened to Andrew, but hopefully one day the truth will come out. This is Leah Croucher, who was 19 years old when she went missing on the 15th of February 2019. The night before Leah's disappearance, everything was normal. She arrived home from work at 6pm, changed into tracksuit bombs and went to go and visit a friend. Just over an hour later, she returned back home and her parents said her behaviour was absolutely normal. The following morning at 8am, Leah gets up and leaves for work. She sets off on her normal route wearing a black coat, skinny black jeans, black converse, high top shoes and carrying a small black rucksack. 13 minutes later she can be seen on CCTV walking along Buzzacott Lane. That was the last confirmed sighting of Leah. Twenty minutes later Leah's mobile phone was switched off and at 9am Leah failed to arrive for work. 
Between 9.30 and 11.15, three different witnesses reported seeing a girl, matching Leah's description, walking by a Furzon Lake. Months later, this picture was released where it was taken around half ten where it's believed to be Leah. At 6pm that evening, Leah failed to come home from work and was reported missing. If you are able to see or hear this, please, please, please come home. You're not in any trouble because we love you so much. We want our beautiful, wonderful little girl to come home. It's now been three and a half years since Leah's disappearance and there's still no evidence as to what actually happened to her. Over the years, there's been a Crime Watch documentary and the police have also done a search of the Blue Lagoon but nothing significant has ever been found. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully those who are missing will be found safe and sound. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And until next time, stay safe.